What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So I've got a question here today. It's from Reddit. It's asking about where to start with investing. First of all, I'm going to say this in the beginning of the video and not say anything else about it, but I do have an investing course if you're interested in learning more things about investing and learning the in-depth strategies and how to build wealth long term i got you if you're interested in that i have a link for that in the description anyway we're going to get on with the video so i'm going to just quickly read this where to start with investing hi everyone i'm a recent college grad and started my first job a month ago i was able to get my master's in business analytics debt free congratulations um through an athletic scholarship I've gotten a few paychecks now and want to start investing slash saving and have no idea where to start. I really have no knowledge about this stuff. Does anybody have any advice or could point me in the right direction? So first of all, I love that somebody actually put themselves out there on Reddit to state their situation and their question. But the, the person, I'm not sure if it's a guy or girl, but the person that made this comment and had this question on Reddit, they're asking about investing and saving. So I would say the first thing to focus on is one, since you've started your full-time job, I would definitely say make sure your 401k is in place. And I would say make sure that your 401k is up to where your company matches you. And basically what that means is your company is gonna give you a certain amount of money based on the percentage of your paychecks that you put into your 401k. So for example, some companies say, hey, if you give me 8% of your paycheck pre-tax, what we'll do is we'll match you 50% on the dollar. So for every dollar that you put in, we give you 50 cents. As you could imagine, this type of thing moves up fast, especially as the interest compounds on your investment. So is the dollar amount that your company pays you per dollar that you put into your 401k, if that makes sense. So to make sure that's in place, that's first and foremost, that will literally be built in. It'll be automated. You won't even have to think about it. The second thing I would focus on is build yourself a little bit of a nest egg, like maybe a couple thousand dollars in your general savings account and then make an emergency fund and just build your way up to three months worth of expenses and then three months worth of paychecks and then six months worth of expenses and then six months worth of paychecks. That method right there is going to build you up people will just generally say one or the other like do three months worth of expenses or three months worth of paychecks it's like a ladder you know do one then do the other and then just keep building up but you can kind of do that on your own time it doesn't have to be a rush you could just set aside a little bit of money every now and then and you could even automate your bank account to send 50 to maybe a hundred dollars to your emergency fund until you're ready to build it up to that level but you have to start somewhere so that's where i would say to get started with saving i'm not quite sure how this person is looking on their savings they just generally asked about investing slash saving so if they don't have their savings together that's the advice that i would give and it's also good for the people watching this video that's what i would advise you to do if you're just getting started the investment part is taken care of when it comes to your 401k so boom you're good to go there if you're worried about your retirement boom then you start focusing on your saving. Now, once you get those things in order, you're already paying for a lot of insurance. Why not add life insurance on top of that? I'm sure your job has life insurance and that's all fine and dandy, but you also wanna open up your own life insurance policy. Um, for example, you could do term, which is like for a 10 year period, for example, but it insures you for however much money you're willing to pay for. The younger you are, the cheaper the insurance is going to be. But let's say you pay, let's say you're 21 and you have life insurance and you pay $100 for it per month. That could insure you for $500,000 if something were to happen to you in the next 10 years, your family would be taken care of. And then you also have whole life which is like an investment itself. It's basically a life insurance policy that behaves like an investment. It goes up little by little by little. You can do a lot more research on it. I'm not gonna to go too in depth in this video. I just want you to look into both of these different types of life insurances. But it goes up little by little by little. At first, it's kind of not really doing that much and then boom, now you have a thousand. Boom, now you have 2,000, 3,000. And then it just keeps improving every single year, going up every single year. And you can actually borrow against that in an emergency tax-free. And there's no term to it. So 
the, the thing about the term insurance, yeah, it can insure you for a lot of money, but if after, but if that 10 years passes and then something happens to you and you haven't put more insurance on yourself, that money goes away. But with whole life, it's going to be there for your family and for those that you care about, those that you are leaving that money behind for. It's something that a lot of people really don't talk about or think about, but I think you should get life insurance as young as you can possibly get it. I didn't find out about this stuff until I was like 24 and then I took advantage of it immediately. But it's something that I would strongly, strongly emphasize when it comes to investing because that's a form of investing into your family. Like, but if you don't have kids or a spouse yet, that's all right. You still have parents, you still have probably siblings or, or, or maybe someone you really care about, someone who is your legal guardian, the godmother, godfather, something like that. But if you have those types of people in your life that you care about and you want to leave something behind for, I would strongly recommend looking into life insurance, looking into different life insurance companies and listening to what the people have to say and just see what works best for you. After that, I would say look into a Roth IRA. The Roth IRA is another tax advantage account. So your 401k is tax advantaged in that your money goes in there before it gets taxed. So it, get, it doesn't get taxed until after you retire and start withdrawing your money. But, but your Roth IRA is when you take money that you've already been paid from your paycheck, and this is post-tax, you throw that money in your Roth IRA, it's already been taxed. So it's a tax advantage account in that when you do get ready to retire and withdraw the money, it is going to be tax-free. So you have your 401k that's building up a good retirement for you. Then you have your Roth IRA that's building up a good retirement for you. And you have life insurance in the background for your family. And of course, you have your savings accounts giving you a good cushion if something bad were to happen, like you got injured, lost your job, things happen. Life is pretty tough sometimes, but you have these things to make life a little easier and that's what I would recommend. Then of course, you have things like your individual personal investments. You might be looking into the stock market. And if you're a beginner, you might not want to invest into, say, individual stocks, but you might want to invest in something that tracks something like the S&P 500 or the total stock market. And there's a bunch of options for those in the stock market. They're called ETFs, they're called index funds, but you can invest into these types of things which track the index and you can actually set yourself up pretty nice for the future. And there's also ways you can look inside of the indexes to see what companies live inside of them, so to speak, and you can see what companies you would look at investing into in stocks when you're ready to invest in stocks. And as you keep building on top of all of this stuff, as you keep building your savings accounts, now you can start building other savings accounts where you're saving up for a house or you're saving up for a wedding ring or for a vacation or whatever the case is. But you can set yourself up for your wants, your needs, the future, whatever the case is, you can set yourself up pretty good just by learning about where you even get started when it comes to investing. And if you take my course, I'll also be showing you how to rotate your portfolio. That's extremely important to do. But if you win super big in the stock market and you're up a crazy amount of percent, you can take some of the money as profit and put it back into your savings account so your portfolio remains as you plan for it to remain. That may not make sense now, but that's okay. I'll discuss that in a completely different video and I extensively cover it in my course. It's the last part of my course and I think it's one of the most important because if you're gonna start investing, you should at least understand what the end state looks like and you should also understand what it looks like while you're doing the motion of investing. And part of your portfolio is gonna be cash. Part of your portfolio is gonna be your life insurance. It's gonna be your Roth IRA, your 401k. It's gonna be your personal investments. This is what encapsulates your portfolio. Your house will be part of your portfolio. So you wanna start thinking about those things. You wanna think about what percentage of my wealth do I wanna be in cash? What percentage do I want to be in my Roth IRA? What do I wanna be in my personal investments in the stock market outside of my retirement accounts like my 401k or Roth IRA? Once you start thinking about these things, you might see that, okay, I want 30% in the stock market. Oh wait, my assets are growing so much that now it's taken up 50%. So now I need to take 20% off the top. You get what I'm saying? So that's just an example, a pretty extreme example, but 
that is all I really wanted to talk about today. That's where you get started with investing. You start looking into what makes sense. I would go in the order that I gave you though, but you could start looking at what makes sense to you because I don't know your unique situation. You can look into that. You can look into what life insurance you want. You can look into what type of brokerage accounts you want for your Roth IRA. You can look into your job and see if they even have a matching program. And if they do, what percentage do you need to contribute for them to match you? And you can start looking within and seeing how much you need to set aside per month for saving and how much you can have as, I guess, guilt-free spending money so you can still enjoy your life while achieving your goals at the same time. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.